So, AMD just made an announcement, and um, they just keep marching along and never miss a beat. So it's just it's just the way how things are. You see, ever since Zen was launched, it's been a really constant one-two punch every year with a new architecture and desktop CPUs being launched uh, pretty much you know in the summertime, and then you have you know the new mobile processors being announced at CES, and this year is just no different. Look, there's no denying that Zen 3 was a massive success on the desktop with the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, and the updates to the 7 nanometer process and other architectural revisions allowed for huge performance gains. And you know, when you checked out our reviews, I mean, the numbers really do speak for themselves. And it's actually making its way into laptops, uh, which is kind of obvious and we expected it. So today, AMD, announced Ryzen 5000H and 5000U series. Now, there's a lot of cool and exciting stuff around this launch, mostly because it looks like AMD has finally convinced laptop manufacturers to use their CPUs in more designs and then pair them with the highest end GPUs that are available in the market. Now, competition is a good thing, and Intel hasn't been just sitting on their butts either. Just yesterday, they announced Tiger Lake H35 for ultra portable gaming laptops, and that even a more powerful version of Tiger is gonna be coming into higher end laptops later this year. So that should be really exciting as well. So with all of this news, I wanted to dive in a simple explainer video about AMD's new 5000 series mobile CPUs, what you can expect from them, their competition, as well as addressing some of our concerns as well, especially with the Ryzen 5000U series. I'll also make sure to leave timestamps in the description down below, or you can actually check out different chapters throughout the video just to make it easier for you guys. So without any further ado, let's dive in. But first, we gotta pay some bills. You know, 2020 has been tough. Let's not make our components suffer. Let them breathe, let them relax. With the Eclipse Air Series by Fantex, your hardware will appreciate the size options and you the experience. Available for every build at different scales and price points too. They all share the ultra fine mesh front panels engineered specifically for best airflow with perforations of one millimeter that also act as a dust filter. Check out the P300A, P360A, P400A and P500A down below. The perfect eclipse for 2020. All right, so since you're all probably already familiar with the Zen 3 architecture, I won't go into too much detail other than just to say it's a huge step forward for AMD's CPUs. Now you can check out that video right over here where we go more in depth about uh, what the architecture is. Uh, but either way, it's coming into laptops and that's a really, really big deal. And that's mostly because AMD has reworked the architecture from top to bottom in order to target areas that matter a lot uh, to efficient mobile devices. So they've optimized power delivery, focused on delivering consistent clock speeds, and they've also made sure that more performance could be delivered at a given TDP. What hasn't really changed all that much is the platform, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So let's dive right into the 5008 series lineup, which are targeting more typical notebook form factors, which means you won't really see them in the thin and light market. Now here's a quick summary before getting into the details. All the CPUs will have the same core counts as before. They'll also operate at slightly higher configurable TDPs as the 4008 series. So instead of 35 watts to 54 watts, we're talking about roughly 45 watts and higher, though AMD isn't saying what the maximum TDP is, but I guess we'll have to figure that out for ourselves a little bit later. The HS series CPUs are still around for thin and light performance laptops and are limited to 35 watts. They have higher sustained clock speeds, and of course they have all the Zen 3 improvements baked in, so a higher IPC, a lot better single thread performance, more cache, and a lot more. The interesting thing this time is that there's a bit of a logjam at the top of AMD's lineup with four different Ryzen 9 CPUs and six different processors with eight cores. This is all headlined by the Ryzen 9 5980HX, which boosts up to 4.8 gigahertz with a base frequency of 3.3 gigahertz. Now for reference, the 4900H was at 4.4 gigahertz and 3.3 gigahertz base. So it's the same frequency, but 400 megahertz higher boost. And that translates into TDP of 45 watts and higher. There's also a 5980HS, which like all the HS series CPUs is gonna be treated as a special edition reserved for select thinner and lighter laptops since its TDP is just 35 watts. If this thing is anything like the 4900HS, it'll be super rare, but I'm actually hoping to see this being available 
available in more devices because the ASUS G14 really left a good impression on me. The 5900HX and HS pretty much mirror the 5980 CPUs and they even operate at the same base frequency. The only difference is in the maximum achievable boost speed, which gets a cut of 200 megahertz. The Ryzen 7 5800H with its eight cores and 16 threads, along with the 12 thread Ryzen 5 5600H are probably gonna be the most popular CPUs of this lineup. And that's because both are more affordable options than the Ryzen 9. And they also get a frequency bump of 200 to 300 megahertz, along with all the other Zen 3 goodness. And that's gonna pretty much make these the most epic CPUs on laptops. Now, performance isn't something that AMD discussed a lot, but it's pretty obvious that they're gunning for Intel's flagship CPUs. They're showing the 35 watt Ryzen 9 5980HS spanking pretty much everything Intel's got right now. But looking at this, it's also pretty obvious that the new Tiger Lake H35 series is laser targeted at taking down the Ryzen HS. It should be really super interesting to see how that battle goes. As for the HX series, well, there's one little thing that was a bit buried in their presentation, and that's this one right here. Yes, unlike the 4008 series, this one will allow laptop manufacturers to offer overclocking or undervolting on their designs, of course. That's actually really exciting. Now, when you look at performance, well, yeah, this is gonna be all AMD until Intel launches their higher end Tiger Lake H45 series sometime later this year. It isn't even close since Zen 3 is competing against an i9-10980HK, which is an architecture uh, that's pretty much half a decade old. Now, this is probably why Intel's been so focused on bringing Tiger Lake to a point where they can release an eight core 16 thread version of it for laptops. Now, before I get into the low power U series, this is where things are gonna get a little confusing, so just bear with us for a sec. You see, it's no secret that AMD's been struggling to produce enough CPUs, GPUs, and console SOCs to meet the demand, and as a result, they've actually decided to slow their transition to Zen 3. Unfortunately, the 5000U series gets a bit sacrificed for this, so let's see how. While all of the 8 series CPUs get the Zen 3 architecture, the U series is kind of all over the place. The Ryzen 7 5800U and Ryzen 5 5600U are moving to Zen 3, but the 5700U, 5500U, and 5300U carry over the same Zen 2 architecture as their 4000U brothers. That means they don't get all the benefits of the new architecture, but AMD is still adding some things to spice them up. All of these will get generally higher clock speeds and have SMT turned on, which means more processing threads. And personally, I think this is a bit of a double-edged sword since the 4700U and 4500U were awesome CPUs since physical cores performed a lot better than simulated threads, but I guess AMD needed to do something here. Also, make no mistake guys, the lack of Zen 3 will be a major disadvantage for these processors. You can see how this translates to the official U-series lineup with the 5800U being Zen 3 and the 5700U sitting around Zen 2. Even though it has the same number of threads and pretty similar clock speeds on paper, the 5700U will be really far behind on performance. The same goes for the other CPUs. I have to say, while I understand why this is happening, it's actually pretty sad to see only two of these roll into AMD's latest architecture. Having an eight core, eight thread CPU on Zen 3 would have been a dream come true for a mid-tier thin and light laptop, but I guess that's just not gonna happen this time. Now rolling into performance of the 5800U, and it's really impressive to see versus the previous generation and Intel's Tiger Lake i7 1165G7. The only place where it falls behind is with lightly threaded office applications, and that actually aligns perfectly with what we've been seeing with testing. The problem is that you can directly see what's happening when some CPUs are using an older architecture despite their higher frequencies. While the 5600U and 5800U show massively better performance in single thread apps, the others simply don't. On the other hand, adding more processing threads causes raw multi-threaded performance to increase as well. But at the same time, you can see exactly what we're talking about here. Moving from a native core design to double the threads uh, through SMT doesn't lead to a two-fold performance increase. It's not even close, guys. So getting eight threads on a budget CPU like the 5300U is nice, but its impact isn't as big as you might think, especially in real world applications. Another concern for AMD has to be their integrated GPU situation, especially when it comes to the U-series, which won't typically be paired with a discrete card. Um, Intel's Tiger Lake has a pretty impressive graphics backbone with the XE graphics, and we've already seen its capability to either match or beat the integrated Vega GPU in the 4000 series. 
or 4000U series. Now, while AMD hasn't confirmed this, if rumors are right and the 5000U series uses Vega instead of RDNA, they might be fighting an uphill battle, especially when it comes to accelerated encoding and decoding tasks. Now, like it or not, content creations become part of everyone's lives, and a lot of those apps have transitioned to GPU acceleration. So AMD really needs to step up their game here. So I guess this pretty much wraps up this video. I honestly can't wait to see how these announcements translate into real products a bit later this year, with new laptops being released around late February to March timeframe. Now, while Intel's announcements showed that competition is coming back, AMD just hit back really hard this time. And if it can improve availability as well, I guess 2021 is going to be an awesome year. So with that, thank you so much for watching, guys. Let us know what you guys think about AMD's new announcements. Um, are you guys excited for the Ryzen 5000H and U series? Let us know. I'm Ebo with Hardware Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.